this past summer, the Conservative team, our Conservative team, has been working hard, reaching out to Canadians from coast to coast, talking to everyday people about how Liberal policies are affecting the same thing. Justin Trudeau has failed. On virtually every front, Trudeau has failed to keep his word, and frankly, Canadians are growing very weary of Trudeau's incompetence. His record speaks for itself. Rather than strengthening the middle class, as he's promised, Canadians are paying more taxes while the wealthiest pay less. Instead of small and temporary deficits that he campaigned on, government spending is absolutely out of control. There is no balanced budget in sight till 2045, if we're lucky. Internationally, the Prime Minister has damaged key relationships with important trading partners, and he's jeopardized the millions of jobs that depend on trade. To make matters worse, Trudeau refuses to acknowledge that his inflated taxes and punishing regulations have driven literally billions of dollars of tax of dollars worth of investment outside of Canada. As investment leaves, let's be clear, so do jobs and opportunities, and those jobs and opportunities don't come back. Yet we do not hear a word of concern from this Prime Minister. And just last week, yet another Liberal Minister was found guilty of breaking another conflict of interest law. Minister LeBlanc is following in the footsteps of Justin Trudeau and Bill Morneau. So once again, on the ethics front, we're seeing the same old, same old Liberals who don't believe that the rules apply to them. But let me be clear, these are all Justin Trudeau's failures. He's failed on leadership, he's failed on policy, and he has failed on key relationships. His failures have real consequences for Canadians. Fewer jobs, less opportunity, and uncertain futures. Under Justin Trudeau's watch, Canada has become a place where families are overtaxed, jobs are slipping away, investment is fleeing, major projects can't get built, and people are barely getting by or can't seem to get ahead. Canadians do deserve better. With one year left in his term as Prime Minister, Canadians are realizing that they just cannot afford another four years of Justin Trudeau. That's why Canada's Conservatives will use this parliamentary session to defend hard-working, law-abiding, tax-paying citizens. We will continue to stand up for balanced budgets and low taxes, for secure borders and planned, lawful and compassionate immigration, for a strong Canadian identity and for freer trade. And as Canada's government-in-waiting, Conservatives will work hard to earn the trust of Canadians so that in 2019 we can build a more prosperous and free country where opportunity abounds for all. And now I'll turn the podium over to my colleague Alain Reyes. Merci beaucoup. Bonjour tout le monde. Merci, Candice. Très heureux d'être de retour à Ottawa pour une session qui risque d'être assez intense ici. Euh, je vous dirais que tout le parti, tout le monde a travaillé extrêmement fort pendant l'été qui vient de s'achever. Dans nos circonscriptions, on a eu un congrès national Halifax record avec une participation euh, très importante dans laquelle on a pu travailler très fort sur nos prochaines politiques qui s'en viennent en vue de l'élection de 2019. Notre chef a fait une tournée un peu partout au Canada et de notre côté au Québec, bon, on, a, on a continué notre tournée à l'écoute des Québécois afin de pouvoir prendre le pouls de la population, de leurs préoccupations et de leurs ambitions pour, euh, en vue de la prochaine élection fédérale qui s'en vient. Euh, je vous dirais que ce qui ressort, ce que l'on entend, c'est beaucoup de déception euh, de la part des citoyens et des citoyennes, des gens qui sont insatisfaits par la gestion de ce gouvernement libéral de Justin Trudeau. Euh, on le constate par cet été d'échec du premier ministre Justin Trudeau. On n'a qu'à penser au dossier Trans Mountain, aux déficits qui sont hors de contrôle présentement malgré la promesse du gouvernement de Justin Trudeau, euh, des problèmes à notre frontière avec toutes les entrées illégales, au niveau économique, les négociations de l'ALENA, les négociations transpacifiques qui piétinent présentement et on est en train de, de mettre en péril des emplois un peu partout au Canada, sans compter tous les investissements qui fuient le Canada présentement dans le cas actuel. Dernier dossier, il est tout récent, c'est les manquements à l'éthique et à la transparence. Un autre ministre qui vient de se faire prendre, euh, le ministre Leblanc, ça se rajoute au cas du ministre Morneau, ministre des Finances, et du premier ministre du Canada, comme vous le savez tous, qui est pour une première un premier ministre qui se fait euh, remettre à sa place par la commissaire 
le commissaire à l'éthique qui est euh, au conflit d'intérêts. Soyons clairs, les échecs de Justin Trudeau ont des conséquences pour tous les Canadiens. Moins d'emplois, moins d'opportunités et des dépenses sans contrôle sur les épaules de nos enfants et de nos petits-enfants à tous, partout au Canada. Les Québécois et les Canadiens méritent mieux. Avec seulement qu'une année à son mandat, les Canadiens réalisent qu'ils ne, qu ne peuvent se permettre quatre autres années avec Justin Trudeau. C'est pourquoi les conservateurs du Canada utiliseront cette session parlementaire pour défendre les citoyens de façon assidue, respectueux des lois et qui paient des impôts. Nous continuerons à défendre l'équilibre budgétaire et à réduire les impôts, à revendiquer des frontières sûres, une immigration planifiée, légale et humaine pour une identité canadienne forte et pour un commerce plus libre. Durant la prochaine année, les conservateurs travailleront fort pour gagner la confiance des Canadiens, de sorte qu'en 2019, nous pourrons bâtir un pays plus prospère et libre, où les possibilités seront nombreuses. Merci. Nous sommes disponibles pour vos questions. Vous parlez de l'échec de l'ALENA. Vous parlez de l'échec de l'ALENA. Vous étiez gardé jusqu'à présent de critiquer les, euh, les libéraux au sujet de l'ALENA. Qu'est-ce qui vous fait dire que c'est un échec aujourd'hui, alors que les négociations ne sont pas terminées? Bien, je pense que tout le monde constate qu'en ce moment, il n'y a aucune entente avec les Américains. On était supposé avoir une entente tripartite. Je pense qu'à deux reprises, même, le premier ministre a dit qu'on était sur le bord d'une entente. Et là, présentement, on voit que les Mexicains vont signer avec les Américains. Pendant ce temps-là, on est tous en attente et il y a des emplois qui sont en jeu. Je peux vous dire, dans toutes les circonscriptions partout au Canada, des exemples sont concrets. Il y a des gens qui sont inquiets, puis il y a des investissements qui quittent le pays présentement. Je à M. Trudeau. Que les Américains, la fa... quand ils parlent d'Alena, n'arrêtent pas d'épeler le même mot, M-I-L-K. Un gouvernement conservateur ferait quoi, alors, dans, ce, dans ce, cette circonstance-là pour négocier l'ALENA? Bien, une chose est sûre, avec un gouvernement conservateur, on n'en serait pas là aujourd'hui, avec la façon que les négociations ont commencé. Donc, présentement, présentement, il y a un gouvernement libéral, il y a un premier ministre, Justin Trudeau, qui, a, qui est en train de faire de ces négociations-là un échec. Notre rôle comme opposition officielle, c'est de surveiller ce gouvernement, dans le cas présent, je pense qu'il y a beaucoup de conservateurs qui tentent de travailler par toutes les façons pour l'aider, mais on constate en ce moment qu'il n'y a pas de succès. Et euh, je pense que le gouvernement va devoir répondre de ça parce qu'il y a plusieurs emplois qui sont en jeu. Et je le répète, plusieurs investissements euh, qui quittent le pays présentement. Monsieur Reyes, vous avez parlé d'une identité canadienne forte. Qu'est-ce que vous voulez dire par là? Ça, ça sonne un peu comme une réponse directe à un nouveau parti de Maxime Bernier. Non, euh, je vous dirais que notre côté, on travaille à préparer la prochaine euh, plateforme électorale et à proposer une alternative à toutes les personnes partout au Canada qui sont… Dé, qui sont je, je vais juste finir ma, ma réponse. Euh, euh, à préparer une proposition pour toutes les personnes qui sont déçues et insatisfaites du gouvernement actuel, toutes les personnes qui sont inquiets par la façon qu'on gère notre frontière présentement. Ça va faire plus bientôt deux ans de ça. Il n'y a aucun plan qui a été déposé. On constate dans les données qui sont, qui sont accessibles que seulement 15 des gens qui traversent la frontière sont vérifiés de façon adéquate. Alors, de notre côté, on veut faire les choses comme il faut et on est en préparation entre les propositions. Do you guys have anything to propose for the fall session that could actually get done now? Yeah, we've got uh, some um, private members' bills on, uh, on on the order paper regarding rural crime, but definitely the, the you know what, what's needed is there has to be some tougher penalties and certainty of penalties. And when we're looking, for example, C75 that the Liberals have introduced, which rolls back a lot of um, the, the penalties for some of these crimes, it sends a very weak message uh, across the country. So that's why one of the reasons we're opposing it, and we would be working together with law enforcement. Uh, things like a gun ban really don't do anything. Handguns already are restricted and prohibited. There has to be tough, tougher penalties and certain penalties for these crimes. Is that all those sector jobs lost in the TPP? The NDP has major concerns about uh, the erosion of supply management, about auto jobs lost. 
What's your position on you the know, TPP? You know, overall, obviously, we're very supportive of TPP. We're the government that negotiated TPP. Uh, we've been able to, in government, we were able to negotiate trade deals where we knew that there would be some sectors that would have uh, some more of a positive effect, some of, a, of not as positive. But we were able to work with those sectors to be able to address their concerns and overall see a net benefit for Canadians with these trade agreements. So CP TPP, or now the CPTPP, overall is a net benefit, and we believe that the, uh, the, the ramifications uh, to the auto sector are not ignored, and, but they can be mitigated, and it's good for the country. What about NAFTA? What would you do, what about NAFTA? What would you do about, about milk and, and all the demands from Donald Trump? Well, again, you know, again, we were able to negotiate CETA as well as CPTPP while still uh, maintaining the, the pillars of supply management. What I can tell you what you have to do is you have to have a, a good, strong relationship with your trading partners. You have to go in recognizing the position that you're in. You have to know if there's going to be some concessions, know ahead what those might be, know what you can get and not get. What the Prime Minister has done in these trade relationships is he's just seemed to tick a lot of people off. We almost didn't get TPP. You will recall that Japan was extremely angry at the Prime Minister and what he did. We're seeing a relationship, a key relationship with the U.S., which we should be building on the good relationship that we have. And again, Trudeau has known, certainly we all understand that Trump can be who Trump is, but the Prime Minister sure didn't help the situation with a lot of the things that he's but done. Dairy, so if I understand correctly, I think you we would, could you get would a give deal. the same position we, I don't know what's on the table, literally, but I will tell you that as Conservatives, we have a very strong record of getting deals done, and we were able to include supply management, and the supply management folks recognized that it was but a good deal. So, how, 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 would they, well, how, how would the Conservative approach with Donald Trump be different than what Justin Trudeau is doing? Well, we have a very uh, respectful and grateful relationship that we have with our U.S. counterparts, and we certainly wouldn't have gone in and started to lecture on things like gender rights in the environment. So again, how we've negotiated previously, I'm happy. I think we, as Conservatives, we're really happy to put our track record of how we negotiated trade agreements uh, before the Canadian public, and we would continue doing it that you way. Know, what the, what the Conservatives a significant backlog of legislation, serious legislation that needs to get passed by uh, next year. Are you concerned that the Liberals will avail themselves to some of the tools available to them in terms of time allocation. What message are you taking yeah. to the House leaders meeting? I would definitely expect that they'll keep doing that. That's been their approach as they've been ramming through legislation. Uh, they have not worked with us very well. Uh, you will recall two sessions ago when they tried to change the rules around question period and how often we worked. Uh, we, were, we, had, we had some tools available to us and we worked for that. We tend to be, though, we're not obstructionists, so we want to have an effective parliament where we uh, show our opposition, we use the tools of Available. There are some pieces of legislation right now though, that are having a very detrimental effect to Canadians. C69 is one of them. And so I, I, I think you're going to see us putting up as many roadblocks as possible so we can stall that and hopefully not see that come to pass. You've got an electoral bill to for a stronger Canadian identity. What do you mean? You know, I think it's important um, that we talk about what we have to be proud of as Canadians and what unite us. I think it's important to talk about um, our, our past and not just with shame and apology, but with also with gratitude. I think it's important, as our leader Andrew Scheer talked about, diversity is a product of our strength. Our strength in Canada is our freedom. And we need to defend our freedoms, freedom of belief and conscience, which is something the Liberals have completely trampled over. Freedom of expression, freedom to worship. These are things that allow us to be diverse. This is why we have diversity, because we have freedom. And I think that it's important that we talk about that and we talk about it with pride and gratitude. Ms. Bernier, do you have do you give Maxine Bernier's new party as much of an opposition as the Liberals? No, in fact, we're, I don't think we're even sure exactly what he's what his party uh, well, you know, how it's going to operate. On Friday, so how yeah, are you, so how are the Conservatives I, viewing that? To, do you view it as a threat, as an opposition no, party? No, I, I think it's wise. You pay attention to any other party. You would pay attention to it, but not necessarily consumed with it. We're focused on. The, the, the person that we have to remove out of government is Justin Trudeau. That's where the damage is happening, and that's what we're, so, where we're so doing. And we're, we've actually, we've actually we made a lot of progress in the last year. Let's be clear. If it wasn't for Conservatives, 
Most Canadians wouldn't even know about the illegal border crisis that's going on. If it wasn't for Conservatives, Canadians wouldn't know that Omar Qadar got ten and a half million dollars and the travesty, but the travesty around that. If it wasn't for Conservatives, Canadians and, and other, others who are opposed to the carbon tax, we have been very effectively talking to Canadians about the mismanagement and the failures of Justin Trudeau, and Canadians themselves are seeing the effect of it. You, think, you, said, you said this government has trampled on freedom. What do you, what do you mean? How well, have the they done that? The attestation, for example, whereby if you don't agree with the government on certain policies, we have been traveling across the country. I literally have heard from groups that want to help young people during the summer. They were denied Canada Jobs funding. They're not religious organizations. They're not doing any kind of activist work. But the Liberals say, no, you don't have a freedom of personal belief and conscience. When you trample on those rights, you trample on diversity. And that's what we're seeing the Liberals do. I think in closing, I'll take one more question. Do you think that if Trudeau had Canadian identity, your new, your, new your new priority on Canadian identity, though, does sound like a response to Maxime Bernier's um, new launch of a party where he vows to defend um, well, we've been individual talking, again we again look 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 at who brought up the job attestation and but highlighted that, that but that, but that well i think we we're very well we, we've been very clear on protecting freedom belief freedom of conscience uh, we've been extremely active on it uh, but not just that canadians are upset and even canadians who believe differently than maybe some of these faith groups canadians believe in freedom of belief and that's what we're defending. Thanks very much. Can I ask him up?